Now is the time. We've reached a fork in the road. There are an infinite number of opportunities. How do we want to imagine the future? Join us in questioning the way we live so that we can all live better. Um, the funnest part was knowing that um, after probably four years of renting that we were going to be moving into our own shack. The parts where we agreed. <laughs> um, Favourite part? Oh, it was kind of exciting actually because it was like budget, doing it a bit differently, um, had to think completely differently about everything. So that bit was fun. And actually the hands-on bits were fun too while we painted it ourselves and we did stuff like that. That was all good. So the biggest challenge in designing this with Lorna was the fact that it always takes her so long to work out that I'm right. You know, it's kind of like you plant a seed, you gotta go back and water it, you gotta to tend it to it, you gotta get sunlight on it, you gotta give it love, you play classical music next to it, you do so many things. And then there comes a time when she owns that as her idea and that's fantastic. Uh, seriously, what, what is the challenge? Um, well, the challenge is, I think, what everybody's challenge is. And I think everybody's challenge is that, you know, you have two humans are going to live in one home and each person has a slightly different thing that they prioritise, that they see is more important. Plus, everyone is tonal, aesthetics, um, you know, even colour preference is always varies from, from the other partner. I mean, you know, very rarely you go sit two humans together and give them a separate test and they're going to come up, you know, 100% compatible, let alone, you know, the chances of that happening just because you sort of fell in love and got married. Um, the biggest challenge was actually me being able to visualise what it was going to look like. That's what I really struggle with. So I often will see something on a plan and, and then a picture comes up and it may not be anything like that. Whereas Dad will have, um, he'll have pictured the whole thing completed, finished, living in it from one, two lines on a piece of paper. He goes, well, this looks good. And I'm going, I don't understand it. So that's probably the biggest challenge was me trying to understand what he meant by things and then feel comfortable with it. Oh, definitely the kitchen. Yeah, I'd say definitely the kitchen. Um, yeah, probably probably the kitchen because for me that was my that's my space, so that's what I'm more invested in. I think I think the key is, and this applies to you know the culture wars today. Like outside of this, I always relate what happens on a you know, on a micro level to the macro, you know, what happens inside, inside yourself, inside your own home, so to what's happening, you know, outside uh, on the planet. So the key is to firstly understand that there is something fantastic about the fact that we don't all agree with everything. You have to celebrate that. That's the first thing that I try to say, and it's not always easy to do, especially when you know you're right and the other person's taking you down this tangent but you still want to celebrate the fact that they're taking you down this other tangent and you still want to celebrate the fact that that it is they can inspire you by even if they say eight things that you don't agree with by by virtue of the fact that they're confident to say things that then eventually they're going to say one or two things that's going to go ah that's that's a good idea yeah that makes it yeah i can take that on board so and you build and build on top of each other. So I think we're getting to a point these days where when people disagree, they yell at each other and think that the other person's either stupid, ignorant, or uninformed, who's got no taste or no aesthetic balance or just thinks about whatever, whatever, whatever. Um, and it, to be honest, your mum and myself, probably at the early days, I was more into the aesthetics, the balance. Mum was more into the practicality, especially with areas like kitchen. So. But, but that's not exactly true because I feel the practicality too to some extent 
but it's almost like you take the role of being the aesthetic person and mum feels the aesthetic because she's got her own sense of taste and aesthetic as well. But it's almost like you're playing this invisible game like that until you work out that you're doing it. Then you sort of go, okay, let's celebrate the fact that we're going to bring something different to this. Let's, let's enjoy the juicy bit of sort of like debating it. Let's, let's celebrate the debate. Let's, and even if sometimes the debate goes a little bit, ah, oh, fuck it, or whatever, whatever, even celebrate that part and then bring it back to somewhere where it's beautiful and peaceful and, and that you can be productive. And, and then that's how we're going to end up with something better. It's, it's almost like celebrating and understanding that that, it, that that is the juice. That is the most important part is the fact that we don't agree and that's how we both grow and how we both get better. We both challenge each other. And therefore, hopefully, in, in the house sense, we're going to create something that's very, very good. The problem is if you both compromise too much and you end up with something that neither of you are happy with. So what you've got to try and make this be is something that you both are happy with. And sometimes that takes humility to admit that, oh, look, I said this last week, but uh, now I see your point and I think it's actually better than what I was arguing for last week. And without that humility, without that ability... Everything falls over. You see it in politics these days. You see it everywhere. The moment we can come together and share the fact that we are introducing something different and then we can sort of like celebrate that and then get the best out of that, not the worst out of that, is I think when we create gold. Um, That it is an ongoing work in progress (laughs) and sometimes you absolutely nail it and other times one person speaking Martian and the other person speaking ancient Russian and the two shall never meet. So what have I learned? I've learned that you've got to let go of assumptions and try and really listen. And when you do that, it works a lot better. But it's hard, not to, it's hard to do that all the time. I live in a house with three girls. And it could be argued that my method is a little bit abrupt and not sensitive enough. And so, and the word that was used the other day that was a bit of a, what do they call it, a little bit of a um, light bulb moment for me, was when somebody said, um, I don't think it might have been you, it might have been Lorna. Yeah, okay, just show a little bit more, or make it look like you're showing a bit more compassion and empathy. And I go, okay. I think I am, but obviously I'm not. So I'm going to work on that, and that that was a that was a good moment because then because I get pretty excited, pretty passionate, you know, with it, and I love it. I actually also love the the the, 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 the bait part. It's kind of it's juicy. It sort of like gets you fired up, but but then other people don't. So other people you need to tread with them. So even when you're having a conversation where you're trying to get the best out of each. There's still a method that you can do it with, which is either really excited and a bit, or it can be a little bit more calm, letting the other person talk a little bit more, never being one of my strengths, and and um, and showing a bit of empathy and compassion, and and I think and I think that when that um, uh, was mentioned, it was like, mm, yeah, good point. Yeah, that bit not jump to assumptions um, to try and let the other person talk and to coin one of dad's phrases to steal man and not store man to try and build up the idea even if I'm not sure about it whereas I probably have a tendency to go oh that doesn't sound good or I don't think I like that without maybe giving it enough air time so that's something that I have to keep working on. I find that when I work on a, on a situation trying to solve something with myself, it's like, of course, yes, it, yes. It, it's just effortless. It just, yeah, yeah, good point, Frank, well done, and, and it's sweet, and it just goes easy. Outside of myself, if I had to rank number two, um, I'm not going to do that. <laughs> um, what's your oldest daughter's name? 
I'm not going to say that because I know she's going to edit this and put her name as in that was the person I was talking to. <laughs> That's a loaded question. <laughs> Samara is an absolute breeze to work with. We have a great working relationship. We communicate really well most of the time. Um, she can be a bit bossy sometimes, but mostly not. Mostly really good communicator. Um, yeah, Tasha's easy to work with. Dad can be easy to work with. <laughs> I'm being diplomatic here, this is on video. <laughs>